<laughs> Yo, let me ask you something, man. How do you deal? Because I know I'm not even live, and every now and then we say some shit and it causes a little stir. Mm-hmm. But how do you deal with the constant waves of controversy that sometimes come about in your daily life? Like, like, like the Tammy Loren shit. Like, mm-hmm. how do you deal with the controversy that you might mean one one thing, but next thing you know, you wake up and the country's on some other wave in terms of some shit you're in the middle of. You just got to deal with it. I mean, personally, I'm not above any critique from my community. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like when they when they saw me with Tommy, I'm not mad. You know, we got a we got a, a long line of we got a history of people selling out. Yes. <laughs> once they yes. once they get to a certain position. Yes. So if they thought I was in the sunken place <laughs> and they came for me and they wanted to check me, I I totally understand it. Right. You know, but like it's it's a lot of nuance that went with that whole situation. That's the one time I've ever met Tommy Lauren in my life. Right. Was that day. I had corresponded with her before because I got hip to her because of Black Twitter. Because one day after the Super Bowl, when she went in on Beyonce, Black Twitter hit me up and they was like, you got to get this girl donkey today. So I went to go see what she was saying. And I'm, she compared the Black Panthers to the KKK and, you know, Jay-Z, the 14-year drug dealer. So I gave her a donkey today. Then they asked me to come on her show. So I went on her show. But I went on her show just to tear down some of those false narratives that she was putting out there specifically about the Black Panthers. Right, right, I mean, right. don't get me wrong. My last name is Pinkett Smith Winfrey Knowles Carter. But we're not going to be out here trying to do... <laughs> we're not going to be out here doing revisionist history of on course. the Black Panthers. No, 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 you no. You know? No. So I we, mean, they're giving kid food, kids food to kids on, in the morning. Man. They don't talk about that. Come on, man. They never so, talk about that. So we did that, and then I hadn't talked to her for months. Right. And then, like, I saw her... Uh, she was coming to New York, so they hit me up like, she was coming to New York, she want to come on The Breakfast Club. Cool. Then I saw what she did, you know, with Trevor Noah, and then I was watching some of the other rhetoric, you know, where she was going in on Colin Kaepernick, and I'm like, yo, what's up with Tommy? But what the ill thing was, when they saw us together, that was actually a meeting at Viacom. Okay. And the reason it was a meeting at Viacom, because, you know, when they saw me on her show going in on her, somebody up there had the bright idea, like, this would be a great television show. Yeah. And I was like, no, 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 right. this would not be a great television show. And every, when I say every woman in the building, black, white, whoever was like, Charlemagne, you better not do this shit. I'm like, black I'm, and white. Black and white. I'm yes. like, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. And right. you know, the meeting we had with Tommy, I was having conversations with Tommy, like, Tommy, if this isn't really you, you're going to self destruct. This plane going to land yeah. with no wheels on it. I said, if you're really just out here saying things for shock value, you're not going to last because there's no value in shock. And I told her about the rhetoric she was putting out that was dangerous. To us in our community, I remember she said, uh, she told me a story about why she feels the way she does about Black Lives Matter. Right. And um, the reason she felt that way, and life is all about perspective. She was in, she's, she lives in Dallas, right? So she was in Dallas the night that guy went crazy and started shooting all those the police officers. Right. And she was getting death threats to her phone and like somebody put her parents' address out there. So in her mind, after that, and then watching like videos of people marching and saying kill all cops and they were saying they were part of the black lives matter movement that's what made her have that outlook on black lives so, matter so so <clears throat> anec- anecdotal instances with with no education behind the whole absolutely right. and so i said to her i said well you support trump right? right and she said yeah i said well do you think all trump supporters are racist she was like no i mean there absolutely is you know racist in the, that support trump like when i go to his rallies you know and whatnot it's absolutely people that are straight out racist i said she said but a lot of us are just anti-government we want somebody to come shake things up i said well how come you can see the nuance in the trump supporters but not the nuance in black lives matter right like just because somebody you know says they're a part of black lives matter and they say they want to kill all cops they don't represent the whole black lives course, matter movement course, that's not what the black lives matter movement was yes. founded about yeah. so those are the conversations that we had and then you know we come downstairs and the tmz cameras are there and i'm like ah. Oh, so you saw shit. you saw it coming did yeah, you and, see then, it then coming? I, and then I took a picture with her before, but I thought it was going to be funny because I put the picture in black and white and I put, do you see color? Right, right, right. Because that's what she said on Trevor Noah the night before. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, when those TMZ cameras caught us, and it's funny because under, the, under I had a Def Jam jacket on. <laughs> Underneath the Def Jam jacket, I had a jacket that, that the shirt had Martin Luther King, Huey Newton, Malcolm X, and I think Nat Turner on it. And I just felt all of them shaking their head at me as soon as that damn camera rolled up. But even that a couple of days later when I made that tweet, that tweet was not coming from a malicious place at right. all. I was not trying about to, about women of color creating yeah, a platform. I said, I said like it would, Tom, Tommy. Yes, like, I said it would be dope if a woke woman of color created a platform to control our narratives and become a voice the way Tommy Lauren did. And then I yeah. even was giving examples. I put up the Young Turk News Network, mm-hmm. and I was just like, 
It was it was a, it was more of a tweet about infrastructure. Right. It wasn't about you. Be, I don't want you to be nothing like Tommy. Y'all brighter and better than Tommy. Right, right. I just wanted that infrastructure, which we have learned now that Tommy didn't even own. She didn't even of own course. her Facebook. Of course. I don't know why you would sign your rights away to your personal Facebook, but that's ridiculous. Fame and shock. Yeah. So it's just like I, I, I took heat for that, and I, I, I couldn't do nothing but accept it. How did that shit feel, man? Like, cause. That shit man, was like. Man, let me tell you something. I, I, <laughs> I don't. Anybody that listens to the Brilliant Idiots podcast or hear me on the Breakfast Club, I always say the last thing you want is the wrath of black women. Yes. You don't want ten crystals, ten Jamela Lemuse, mm -mm. ten Angela Rice mm -mm. on your ass. Mm -mm. You do not want that. And no. I had been saying that for years. How many times I used to tell y'all that wax? Tell Andrew, <laughs> chill out. That's not what you want. Right, right. I end up being the one that took that hurricane black woman heat. It's a different kind of heat. What'd you do, my dude? Like, how that feel? Nothing I could do. Yeah, you I had just, to write I mean, that shit I out? To, I, not, not only did I have to write it out, I just had to let women know, like, I didn't, that's not what I meant. It wasn't you know? the intent. That wasn't the intent. And, and don't get me wrong, it's a lot of women that got it. That's right. how I, and, and I love, I, would, I wouldn't change anything about that situation because that's how I met Angela. Right. Angela was one of the people that, people were tweeting me like, yo, do you know who Angela Rye is? And then me and Angela Rye connected that night, and we've been, that's like, I, I consider her like my amazing, sister for real. Amazing like, sister. Come on, man. Like, that's my, she works out with my wife. Like, that's. Amazing sister. She keeps me on point. Like, yeah. we talk every day. I call her General Rye. Like, we talk every day. That's my people. So, I wouldn't change anything because I met her through that situation. Right. But. It's just not a good feeling when your sisters are saying things like you hate black women. I'm like, what? Here we go. And like that's I, yo, I don't, you say you can say whatever you right, want right, about right. me. You want to like fuck with me? That shit fucks with me because it's, it's your, that's your sisters. Like my wife is black. I know the internet says she's white, but she's a <laughs> she ain't no not even Tyrese black. Like black. <laughs> she's black. Black with <laughs> with faux dreads. Like black. I got two black daughters. Yeah. Like my mom, my aunt. But it's, it's 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 been interesting, you know. Uh, it's been interesting just watching women the past couple of years because it's a lot of things that I've been realizing about women, especially women of color, that I just didn't know. Man, like, this whole black fem feminist movement has been very enlightening, man. Very like, enlightening, just in terms of like how they've been left out or how they feel like feminism as a whole wasn't meant for them. And Jack, I never and, knew. And then just even seeing like it's crazy. It's 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 crazy in 2017 seeing the shit that brothers be tweeting. About sisters, and I'm not trying to be on like this soapbox, yeah. but I didn't know there was this much hate. I think a lot amongst of that, us. I think a lot of that is just for bullshit. I really you think, think so. I, like motherfuckers I, be saying some foul shit on, on social media. Be they be saying like, some foul like, shit to, to be some to be some grown quote unquote grown black men. You like you really saying this shit, my nigga, in public? Yeah, and I'm gonna be honest. Like I, I, I I've told a lot of black women this. I didn't know that black women were hurting the way that they were hurting. Yes, and, and the only reason I didn't know that is because in my life, the strongest people have always been. The women, but, my and, grandma, and, my mom, right. my aunt, like. That. But the flip side is, even though we black men, we still men, so we still, we still have that privilege. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. of you know that absolutely. male privilege absolutely. of not knowing how sexism has invaded our absolutely. views. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, think about it. You could see somebody like Oprah, and you'd be like, "Damn, Oprah got ass!" Like, you know, <laughs> like the first, <laughs> the first thing you do is objectify Oprah, <laughs> fucking Winfrey. You know, I've, I've never done that. Have you, you never you, looked at Oprah's ass? I've never looked at Oprah's ass, man. Yeah, I, I haven't either. You have, you have. No, absolutely Kings not. of the Valley. Nah, yeah, I did the not. Michelle Obama though. I mean Michelle Obama. Come on now, oh, yeah, Michelle Obama. I did the Michelle. Hey Come Michelle, on now. with all due respect. Hey first with lady, all due respect. with all due respect. Hey, with Barack, all due respect, my nigga. <laughs> we good. With all due respect, Michelle Obama got ass. <laughs> Facts. Okay. Yo, man, let's say, let's say. <laughs> with all due respect, yo, yo. Now it, it seems like recently, man, like the, 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 the is there tension between you and Andrew, man? Um, not attention. I mean, when you really friends with somebody, you're going to bump heads. And right. it's just like, now is, like I, like I told him, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we got into it on the podcast. We had the exorcism of alt-right Andy. Yes. You know, but that is the kind of, uh, energy that has happened in the past year in this country. I feel like the consciousness of the country really changed. And like, if you're sitting around taking in a lot of this warped, conservative rhetoric and the reason i call it warp conservative rhetoric because i don't even think this is traditional conservative you know, rhetoric conservatives are like what the that's fuck? what i'm trying to say they're like what the that's fuck? what i'm saying like, I, conservatives I, are looking at trump saying. like what are you, are you exactly serious? exactly so i know i know conservatives yes. i know republicans i got friends that are republicans we talk about this kind of stuff they're just like you just said they're, they're embarrassed like, they're embarrassed like what the fuck is this Donald and, trump and he's killing their party absolutely in the long run so if you just got into politics right 
and you just started doing research, and this is the kind of information you're taking in. You're taking in poison. Yeah, you don't even know. You don't even know what you're taking in. And right. I and like I just I thought I saw Andrew. I felt like he was going down a bad path. Like they was putting him in the same bracket as the Tommy Lawrence and the Milo's uh, yeah, yeah. and the Richard Not Spencers. The Milo's and the yeah, Richard Spencer. And then I'm like, yo, and I told him the same thing. If you're saying things just like for them. shock value, you're going to crash and fucking burn. Period. Like, yo, get back to just being the honest Andrew, the funny Andrew that disrespect, we know. Just be disrespectful. You can still have Don't your... Don't be disrespectful and say all that crazy that's it. shit. That's yeah. it. And, and it seemed like every every issue that was... He didn't even realize he was doing that. Right. Every issue that was black, he'd be against. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't... Was just subconsciously. But it's because he's trying to look at it from another angle other than race. Right. So he'd always be trying to find that alternate angle. He's trying to be something. He's trying to be the devil's advocate. The white but, devil's but, but, advocate. But, but, but it doesn't work. If what you're saying is that poison. Yes, mm. absolutely. Because it's not coming. I don't think it's. And there's nothing wrong with making people see all sides. But right. you got to understand how people's perception of that will be. People's perception of that will be like, you always got something to say negative about black people and black issues. And it's like, I got to defend this man's character because I know him. I don't know the perception of him. I know Doesn't that put him. you? Doesn't that put you in harm's way, though? Um, because yeah. motherfuckers is like, oh, Charlemagne is Charlemagne is, is giving him the platform. Exactly. Charlemagne created this monster. Exactly. Yada yada yada. Well, yeah, absolutely. But you know, that's why he's my friend, and I have to have this real conversation. Once I have this real conversation with you, if I don't see you actually trying to change and see what other people are coming from, then that's where we have a problem. Right. Like that happened. Like I tell this, I, I, I had this conversation at, at iHeart last week. We was talking about the the Pepsi commercial. Yes. With Kendall Jenner. Mm -hmm. And somebody yeah. somebody tweeted me something like, Oh, Charlemagne's not even gonna touch this because of his corporate interest. And I retweeted, like, I don't even give it, I don't give a shit about Pepsi. I don't drink Pepsi. Yeah. I don't drink soda. Yeah. My, you see how my skin look? I don't drink no damn soda. <laughs> so this ain't bleach. It's exactly it's like the soda. <laughs> exactly. It's a lot of water. <laughs> so uh, you know, they got up some people got upset about that, you know. And I said to them, Why don't you worry about the people who are actually offended by the Pepsi commercial? Because those are the people who actually buy the Pepsi product. Yeah. If people stop buying Pepsi, it don't matter how many ads they run. So my whole thing is we got to start, stop, stop, stop dismissing people when they're offended. We can't just call it fake outrage. Let's try to see if there's really something there. Like, why are you upset? Because they're probably upset for a real reason. Yeah. And the fact that you're ignoring that real reason is just making them more upset. Means you're an asshole. You're being an asshole. Yeah, yeah. So it's just like, that was my whole thing. Like, see things from all angles, but just don't take sides with this angle and totally dismiss this angle because then it looks like you're riding for the alt right.